In this lecture, we're going to take the next step with Webpack. We're going to begin configuring it for processing our project files. There are two settings we always need to configure when working with Webpack. We need to tell Webpack where it can find our files. It'll also need to know where it can output the bundle. This process is straightforward. First, we need to create a file called webpack.config.js. It's important to call the configuration file webpack.config.js. It's the file name Webpack will look for when we start running it. This file will contain the settings for Webpack. We can modify how Webpack behaves through it. Inside this file, we'll export an object. There are two properties we are going to add. The first property is called Entry. We're going to set this property to the following. Dot slash index dot js. The entry file is considered the main file for our application. The entry file's responsibility is to load other files we'll need for our application to function. We have the option of defining multiple entry points. We only need one, so we can leave this as is. By default, if we don't set an entry file, Webpack will assume we have a directory called source with a file index.js. It's common practice to structure an application by placing files in a directory called source. We're going to implement such a practice in the next section. For now, the way everything is laid out is fine. I don't mind not having a directory called source. The next step is to tell Webpack where to output the files it bundles. The files Webpack generates are what's known as the bundle files. If we would like to modify where the bundle files are stored, we need to set the output property. This property will be set to an object. There are two properties we have to set, which are the path and file name properties. The file name property is the name of the file Webpack will produce. We can call it whatever we want. If we view the documentation or read online tutorials, most developers call this bundle.js. We'll follow this naming convention. The path property is a bit tricky. This property will be the location of the directory where the bundle.js file will be saved. However, we have to input a full system path. We can't input a relative path because we'll receive an error. Webpath is expecting a full path. Luckily, Node provides a variable for helping us generate a full system path. We don't have to guess and input some random directory. We're going to set this to underscore underscore directory name plus dist. This variable is a constant defined by Node. It's globally available. It contains the path to the current file it's being used in. We are appending a directory called dist. It's common practice to use the name dist. Dist is short for distribution. In the end, Webpack will look at our configuration file. It'll create a file called bundle.js that contains all our JavaScript code. Then, it'll save it inside a directory called dist. With the configuration ready, let's run Webpack in our command line. To run Webpack, we can input the following command dot slash node underscore modules slash dot bin slash webpack. It's a very strange command. The command we've typed points to a file in the node modules directory. Webpack will create this file that will run webpack. It was created when we installed the respective packages. We'll look at a simpler way of executing this file, but for now, let's run it. After a while, Webpack will finish running. The command will output a log of everything that Webpack did. It'll tell us how long it took to bundle everything together, the files processed, and the output. Looking inside our project directory, we will find a new directory. The distribution directory was created for us. Inside of it is the bundle.js file. Upon inspecting this file, we'll find a compressed and minified JavaScript file. The code from the two files have combined into one. Webpack intelligently modified our code to still work. The code inside this file will function as the same as the code we had in our other two files. 
let's address the issue we had moments ago. Ideally, it would be nice to type a command more memorable than typing in the full directory. We can fix this problem by adding the command to the script's property inside the package file. Let's open it. The script's property in the package file are a list of commands. It allows us to write very long, complicated commands through an alias. Let's discover how that would work. Inside this object, we will add an alias called start. The value for this will be set to webpack. You'll notice I'm not typing the full directory. This is because npm will automatically point to the node modules slash bin directory. As a result, we can omit the full directory. There's one more thing we want to add on to the commands. We should set the mode. Webpack can bundle files for production or development. If we set the mode to production, Webpack will optimize the files as much as possible. Whereas development mode will include useful features for debugging. The default mode is production. We can configure the mode through the command line. There are two ways we can set the mode. Inside the start command, we're going to add dash dash mode equals development. The mode option allows us to change the mode. We are configuring this option to development for a better debugging experience. Alternatively, we can open the webpack.config.js file and add the mode property to the exported object. However, it's usually recommended and common practice to set the mode in the commands. This saves us time from having to update the file. Often, developers will create another command where the second command will be for production builds. Let's do that too. Switch back to the package file. Inside the scripts property, create a property called build with the same command as above, but with the mode option set to production. Let's test our command. Inside the command line, input npm run start. This command will tell npm to run the command inside the scripts property called start. After running this command, we will see the same output as before. One thing you may notice is the difference in file sizes. The index file is only a few bytes. However, the bundle.js file is way more massive than the index file. The jump in size is enormous. So why is this? Let's check out the bundle.js file for more answers. Webpack generates a lot of code. Unlike before, the code is no longer compressed or minified. This is so you can better read things and debug the script if you have to. This version of the file is fine since we're currently in development. At first glance, this seems excessive for just a few lines of code. And you're entirely right. If you're using Webpack for small projects, you don't need it. Webpack is for larger projects like single page apps. I promise we'll use Webpack in a larger project, but we'll keep it to this simple example for now. Let's check if the bundle file works. The file that Webpack generates is meant to be used on the front end. We're going to create a file called index.html. Inside this HTML file, we're going to load the bundle.js file. Then, we're going to open the index.html file in the browser. This file is a simple HTML file. We don't need a server to deliver this file. If we open the developer tools, we'll see the messages are still being logged in the console. Congrats! You've created your first bundle with Webpack. We'll continue to explore Webpack in the upcoming lectures.